I might have to do a sort of split personality on this, this speech because I found out uh, this morning that Emily couldn't come, so uh, I'll try and do her part uh, of justice. Um, so, uh, this uh, presentation, Scaling the Archaeological Digital Data Mountain, uh, is looking at some of the real world problems for archaeological data and knowledge, digital asset, uh, access and sustainability, and its um, impact on the decision making process in the physical world. Uh, as discussed by a specific case study <coughs> that we've been working on in Northwest Wales. Um, so, uh, Emily uh, is the heritage, uh, head of heritage management at the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust, one of the four archaeological trusts in North Wales. Um, and then I, um, uh, I, I was the digital media and public archaeology research associate on the project that we're going to uh, be discussing now. Um, GATT, the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust, has been based in Bangor uh, since its formation in 1974. It's an educational charity dedicated to investigating, protecting and promoting the archaeology of North West Wales. Uh, it's evolved over the last 40 years, so this year was our, our anniversary, um, into a hybrid part curatorial service and part contract archaeologist. The regional HER, the Historic Environment Record, is maintained by the Trust as part of its uh, <coughs> service. The HER is an index, not an archive. Okay? Um, and the Trust holds within it many thousands of analogue slides and photographs and many more born digital and other types of data that are indexed or collected by this, uh, um, this organisation. And through this project they needed uh, to think what to do with the material. Unlike other Welsh HERs, uh, they have no images on the um, public access site uh, directly incorporated into the record. And so what was needed was a system to actually deliver um, the archaeological images and link them to their other types of data. In 2009, uh, GATT applied for a knowledge <coughs> partnership, the KTP, as part of the UK Technology Board's uh, funding and Welsh Government funding. We managed to get a three-year uh, postdoc to do it, me, um, and GAT actually contributed 20% of the cost over the three-year project. That's a considerable investment, actually, for a private charitable organisation, uh, about £60,000 over three years. That you know, uh, shows you how much they actually wanted to invest in this particular um, uh, issue. In the context of this session, I'm going to introduce some of the issues we want to explore and then I'll go on to uh, describe the project itself. Um, so, the original proposal was to create what was described as an online image library. Uh, and although I'll go on to explain a little bit for, uh, further on that the brief actually changed and grew over the uh, time of the project, um, the initial uh, issue was dealing with images. By placing images online, the aim was to provide a digital access. The ambition to create a library underlined the importance of sustainability within uh, this sector. The digitization process itself and the mechanism to link the data to the regional HER and archaeological digital archives was, at this early stage, left pretty open. Um, we wanted to look at how we were digitized, how to ensure sustainability, how to link the data, and all the interrelated problems that uh, have at their heart engagement with uh, stakeholders. It's very important that this engagement had a direct impact on decision making. We wanted to develop a mechanism that would sustainably feed relevant information into the HER. Why is the HER important? <coughs> well, it's actually integral to all decision making by curatorial archaeologists in North West Wales, and then obviously into the wider remit. It's a virtual world that intersects the physical world, where public and community archaeology and engagement can directly influence evidence-based uh, processes and used to provide specialist advice. The scope of the historical environment actually feeds into these uh, various areas. I'm not going to read them off. You can uh, have a look at them to your heart's delight. Um, but it just shows you that curatorial archaeology actually has an impact on not only planning and policy, um, but all these other aspects through to glacier projects, uh, through working with farmers, um, providing expert advice to Natural Resources Wales, Forestry Commission, and of course, uh, a whole other uh, areas and sectors. 
In our experience, it's not, there is not a reasonable assumption by most people that in areas of our work will be made in the light of comprehensive evidence base. In a development-related context, this expectation is embedded in the term preservation by record. Where academic work is supported by research and funding bodies, open source and linked data standards are required along with the need to include costs for long-term data management. <coughs> but despite this, there's insufficient clarity across the discipline over digital data standards, including metadata standards. These mechanisms for ensuring access to information are poorly developed. There is too little consideration uh, for the responsibility of meeting the costs for long-term digital storage. So in the light of this, um, the project was asked to develop and uh, come into consideration um, these particular questions. So how can analog photographs be preserved and how can we actually manage our born digital ones? How can we make better use of the information and who <coughs> else is actually trying to get in access to it? And what's the best way about going and solving all these problems? So we're using images as really a case study for dealing with the wider project of online or uh, digital data. Um, so if we're looking at images in the uh, first response, um, where do you put them? Well, um, hopefully under the correct names, in the right folders, then put them on your desktop. Uh, you will actually tend to lose your information if you don't store it correctly or store it in a way that is searchable and meaningful, not only for you, but for actually everyone else who might want access to it. Uh, and of course, if your information is rubbish to start with, put it in the bin. It's so often the problem with the curse of digital. If you don't get it right the first time, try, try again. Um, and you end up keeping every single image that we have. This was perhaps wonderful because storage is nothing at all. Well, storage actually does cost money. And <coughs> we're trying to actually manage and curate and collect uh, archaeological garbage as well as the archaeological record that you're trying to preserve. Uh, as, a, as a zoo archaeologist, um, I'm often used to dealing with uh, toponymy. <coughs> and when you deal with it in the zoo archaeological context, I'm quite happy looking at the way that we go through this toponymic process with animal bones in this case, uh, and finally getting to, you know, from, from uh, the uh, lovely bleating thing up there, I mean, come from Wales, um, and then through to the uh, animal bones in, that we display in museums. Of course, in archaeological imagery, we've got to fund me a workflow as well. Um, and when we're looking at digital images, we can actually enhance them, change them, expand them, cut them, and crop them as co according to our will. Which one do we keep? Well, we probably end up keeping all of them. And then that obviously creates a digital data mountain. Where do we keep this mountain? Well, traditionally, information and, digital, uh, or, and data work out in libraries. We've got a fantastic example in Bangladesh. <coughs> um, however, this is now coming again and again into actually a virtual world or an online presence. With the way that we access our information is often changing as well. Uh, I'm too often telling my students that Wikipedia is not the only source of information, although I know uh, that we'll hear a little bit later how it can be also a valuable source of information. But we do actually need to seek experts in the uh, flesh and as well as on an online presence. We are dealing with linked data, though. You're not just dealing with the people who are surrounding your, uh, and your uh, communities and your neighbors. You're dealing with an online uh, international experience, and that's who you're trying to meet. But sometimes we actually can't see the wood for the HTTPs. It's very difficult to get, sorry, that was a previous uh, uh, paper I've done. Um, the, uh, it's so often to get, your digital data gets lost within the scope of the World Wide Web. There are obviously key existing systems out there that will try and uh, expand, archive, hoover up all the archaeological information that we ha actually hold on the web. And it's wonderful to see some projects already that have actually decided to archive with these particular bodies. It's often the case that after the funding ends, the website ends, and the information is lost. Um, and obviously, we've got some fantastic images or other types of data to showcase. 
We need to think about our <coughs> stakeholders. Were they just actually our internal stakeholders? Actually, you find in many organizations, and of course institutions are guilty of this as well, you often don't know what somebody down the office is actually doing, down the corridor is actually doing. So you're trying to actually share the information within your own organization or your company in the first instance and make it searchable for them. I was going by this sort of hit by a bus syndrome. Um, will the other people know what you were working with? Will they be able to do it well, as well as you? Well, hopefully not, otherwise you won't get the job. But you actually need to make sure that it's set, shared and accessible. Are you trying to meet the people, uh, your archaeological communities? Perhaps you're trying to reach academic audiences. Uh, and this can be at any level, from college level, uh, universities of the third age, through to primary school children as well. Um, we're thinking about the archaeologists of the future as well as the ones in the past. Are you actually trying to reach your um, regional base, in this case again, I'll wave my Welsh flag. Um, are you trying to actually tap into um, heritage tourism as well and showcase what your meaning is or what is important for you, for your visitors? And of course, we've talked about it earlier, you're actually trying to reach the whole world. How can you do it? Well, you're trying to do it in a way that's meaningful for your actual audiences. So you've got to ask them what do they want. Obviously, some people love social media. Other people like a more traditional uh, method of engaging with information. You can do this through some fantastic uh, animation and visualization uh, effects. And other people, of course, like their gaming. You need to reach the audience in an appropriate way for them. So once you've found out and done your stakeholder surveys, it's actually important to try and realize and engage the people that, uh, in the means that they actually want. That's one thing that we did with the visualizing project. We didn't create its own website because one, we wouldn't have the funding to sustain it after the three years, but also we knew that people actually want to engage in Flickr. They want to engage in um, the People's Collection Wales. They want to engage in specific areas. And so it was our duty really to make sure that we we're engaging people in the existing platforms that they are actually comfortable with. Um, and how do we have to do this? Well, I've got to do it bilingually. Um, accessibly, without prejudice, making sure that it's accessible for young and old in the language that they are actually comfortable with. Yes, digital, but actually looking forward to the future as well. I don't like the word future-proof, I don't think things actually exist, but actually making sure that we've got systems in place that make us think about how things can be migrated in the future. How do you reach all these people? Well, one size does not fit all. There isn't a wonderful <coughs> solution, but the best way to do it is actually getting organized. We knew that originally our um, digital data might actually be able to be enhanced, but actually dealing with our analog data, that was uh, immediately we needed to make sure it was digitized to reach the uh, widest group of people. We, uh, did volunteer induction days, got people to go out and um, come into GAT, train them up on how to uh, add data, metadata, data about data, to our um, slides and um, other types of images, and then link those into the uh, HER. So try not replicate any of the data in the HER, but have some sort of identifier that you can actually match the two databases. We did that quite effectively, and we knew that as technology moves on, we need to be migrating that forward as well. <coughs> You've got to think about what you're doing with your data, because otherwise it may end up unreadable. I don't know if anybody can read this, but I can't. Um, as archaeologists, we have changed as a, as a breed. Um, we still like to think of ourselves as this, but too often we actually have to be uh, computer wizards. And that is something that needs to be embedded also within our volunteer group as well. We get so many volunteers who come into GAT because they want to dig, and they often don't see the other side, the curatorial side of archaeology. And so actually engaging in both sides, I think you get a more, <coughs> um, let's say, it, holistic view of archaeology. Um, as I said, we want to reach people in the means that they're comfortable with, and that's through uh, various uh, different methods. Can we do this all with our three-year project? Well, we can't, but we can make our data fit for purpose so that people can take these ideas forward. 
How do we do it? Well, let's say we have this knowledge transfer partnership. We took the um, existing uh, knowledge of the people within the Global Archaeological Trust and their assets, and we took the knowledge that came from Bangor University as well, not just from the archaeology department, but from IT, we talked to the people in legal, we talked to the people in the marketing department, we tapped into all the resources that we possibly could, and as archaeologists we often do that, we try and, you know, nick everyone else's skills and use them to our own devices. We were trying to create this stakeholder online image library, we were trying to make it link, collaborative, sustainable, everything else that you want to, you know, a good project. How did we do this? Digital asset management system. Wonderful. We use this particular system, there are others available. Um, but we wanted to have some sort of way of actually um, managing our systems online. We wanted an elegant solution that could tap into HAR and other uh, data formats could deal with data, different data types. Obviously our case study was looking at images, but we know that there are PDFs, there are 3D data, there's mapping data. We wanted something that would deal with everything. <coughs> something that was cost effective. One quote I, I had for a, a, a down system came out at £200,000. I put the phone down. Um, you do need to make this accessible for uh, um, organisations. And of course archaeology, we're not the best funded. Um, it wasn't something that we could uh, do at the time. Um, so this is what, what we've come up with, the burnout system that we've got. We've got a rolling sort of nice front page of uh, images. This is not a website in its own right. It's linked to a page on our website and then the data tips can take you through to the HER and other data forms. There are obviously the logins like we saw on uh, with Duke Ventures. You can have your, you know, your log site, your public site. Um, and there are different user access levels for each thing. Um, just if you clicked on the, uh, the Visualizing Gwyneth, for example, it takes you to a lovely sort of online image library that everyone's comfortable with. And of course, you can get added metadata and search bilingually for, uh, for, for different things. Um, can you do this yet? Well, actually, it's not quite up there yet, so I can't give you a website for it, I'm afraid. Um, but I believe they are, they are um, sorting it out um, Hopefully that's why Emily couldn't make it today. Um, it links to a real link to Arquilia, which is the online uh, public side of the HER, um, which can tell you extra information. There will be a little thumbnail that sort of pops up there um, for the image, and of course takes you on uh, a journey of archaeological reports and all the other linked data associated with the sites. So keep calm and watch the space. It is coming. Okay. Um, when you're dealing with archaeological data, you're wanting to bring it back to your communities and make it uh, interesting and meaningful for the stakeholders and communities that you're dealing with. Uh, for me, it's a little bit like a sort of game at times. You're trying to make sure that all your partners are um, uh, involved, connected, engaged, um, and make sure that the resources that you're making available are suitable for, for them, or enjoyable for them as well. So I'll just take you through very quickly one of the uh, little projects that we had to push uh, the ideas of what you can do with this sort of data. We had this wonderful collection of um, standing stones of, uh, of Anglesey from the 1930s um, in a scrapbook. We took this <coughs> and um, actually took these, uh, the scrapbook to six schools on Anglesey and asked them, did they know that their standing stone was 200 metres away from their school? No, they didn't. Some of them had actually never been there. So we took the uh, school children out, walked them to their uh, local archaeological site, and then um, in collaboration with other groups, like Heritage Together, um, we actually did some work um, with the stones. We turned this into a, a lovely exhibition that's touring at the moment. It's continuing to tour, uh, hence the word sustainable. Um, and then we tapped in with uh, Ultra, you know, the, the, the people who do 3D printing and uh, and um, visualization of the, the stones as well. But from the base it, we were looking at what those children want to do. They wanted to engage with their local heritage and the teachers wanted more information. So we left them with workshops, we left them with worksheets, um, and they can actually go out and they've got a model for continuing to do this work in, on the uh, stones that are local to them. This is just showing you parts of the artistic impression and the work that was uh, presented in the uh, the uh, exhibition, which will actually uh, it's in the London Museum at the moment. Where's it going? Digital storage. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We are scaling the digital uh, data mountain. 
Um, this is supposed to be for tomorrow's lecture of the um, landscape holography, if you're interested. Um, we have got big challenges ahead. So, very, very quickly, um, working with volunteers in an organisation means that regional HR provides a sustainable model that can be adapted by other organisations. Okay. No, I don't want to drone something. Sustainability is key, um, a key challenge for community or public archaeology. Um, even for time-limited projects, the long-term maintenance of data is the key challenge, and that's the one we need to address. Thank you.